Hi there. If you're here, I hope you're looking for the Fair Isle Crochet Stockings from Brooklyn Handcrafted, because that's what you found. So uh, I will start out by showing you how we're going to create the toe of the stocking, and then we will move on to our graph. We will have the toe to heel section of the graph. We will leave a space for our afterthought heel, and then we will work on the leg section of our graph, and then we will do our cuff section. We'll go back then and fill in our heel afterwards. So I have some messy handwritten instructions. You hopefully have an absolutely beautiful um, printed out pattern or blog post that you can reference that's a little bit clearer than my chicken scratch. So. We're using basic stitch anti-pilling yarn from Lion Brand. I'm using a five millimeter H hook for this. And we're starting with green on this particular stocking. There are four different designs to choose from. This one is going to begin with green and it says here on our pattern, toe section will be green. So we are going to start with a magic circle. I know not everybody's a fan of a magic circle, but it does really close the toe up super nice on these stockings so that you don't have an opening left over for anything to fall out of. So we're gonna go ahead and work the magic circle. So we will tighten up that and we're going to work seven single crochets into this magic circle. Now, I think it's important to make these first seven single crochets loose. The reason I say that is because we're gonna be working split single crochet or also known as waistcoat stitch or knit stitch. Um, and it's a little bit of a tighter stitch so you're probably gonna want a little extra room, especially in this first round where it's small. Um, they're kind of squished together a little bit because you're tightening the magic circle around them. I would also have you wait to tighten the magic circle until you're a couple rounds deep. Um, that'll help your stitches go in a little bit uh, easier too. So we'll go ahead and we'll get these first seven stitches in and I'm making them a little loose, like I said. That way we're able to fit our hook between the stitch rather than into the top two loops. So we've got four, five, six, seven. All right, so I am not gonna pull this all the way tight, but I am gonna pull it enough so that the two ends meet because we're gonna work in the round. So we're not slip stitching to join or anything like that. We are working in the round. I like working over my tail usually, but because we are not um, closing this tight just yet, we're not gonna be able to in this, in this instance. So we will just carry on. Our next round is two split single crochets in each stitch around. So we are doing an increase round. We are doing two stitches into each one. So where we have seven now, we will have 14 next. And where I want you to work this stitch, it's kind of hard to see on the green, I apologize, but you have your two loops at the top, which is what you often work a single crochet into, and then you have the V underneath of them, which is the two strands from your stitch. You're gonna go through the V and you're going to pull a loop through and complete a single crochet. You're gonna do another one just like that in that same stitch. That will be our first increase stitch. We're doing an increase in every stitch around. So we will find our next stitch. Here's the top loop. That means the two strands right underneath of it. We are, nope, now see I grabbed the wrong thing. You can tell because I'm in the top loop there, if you can see that very well. So I need to move over a little bit and make sure I'm in the middle of the stitch. And there it is. We're gonna go one and two and we'll 
carry on all the way around the round like this until we have 14 split single crochets. The reason I like the split single crochet is because a pattern lines up kind of nice and it looks a lot cleaner than it does with regular single crochet. Another way to achieve this is back loop crochet, but it results in a much bigger finished product product. So I really like um, I really like the size that the split single crochet uh, has these stockings come out to be. And they're nice and tight too. So they're not going to stretch and you're not going to have holes eventually in them where pieces of candy can pop through or anything else that you may be stuffing your stockings with. So I believe this is my last stitch, but of course I've been talking and not counting. So I am going to count these real quick after I get my last increase in here. All right, so we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And our last one is right there, 14. All right, so we successfully completed round two. You can tell from your instructions that every round, I'm sorry, every other round is an increase round and then every other round is a round that you just simply crochet in each stitch around instead of doing any increases. And that is so that we get kind of a, a cup um, that we will then eventually hold flat and make into our toe. And I'll show you what that looks like. I have a finished stocking here in a different pattern. So what we end up getting is a nice round toe here. And then we'll work up and we'll do, we'll leave an opening for the heel and then we'll carry on with the rest of the stocking. But I really like the, I really like the way that the waistcoat stitch, the split single crochet stitch looks on this. And the magic circle just makes it so nice and tight right around the very beginning there so that you don't have any kind of holes for anything to poke through. So we will go ahead and carry on, just like the pattern says, doing your split single crochet. All of your stitches are gonna be split single crochet. Every other round is gonna be an increase round and every other round is gonna be just one stitch in each around. And then once you get to, let me take a look at my pattern here. Once you get to row 15, you will do one stitch around row 15. That will be your last row of your cup that you're making for the toe. And then we will begin working the graph. So. I will catch back up with you when we have our cup shape and we're getting ready to start the graph so that I can show you how to read the graph, which is very easy by the way, and also um, how I have found it friendliest to add yarns in and weave your tails in as you go, which is really nice because nobody really likes a bunch of wet ends to weave in at the end, especially inside a stocking. It gets a little bit tight in there. so. I will see you back here um, after round 15 when we begin our graph. All right, we've now gotten to the point where our toe or bowl is complete. We've finished round 15 and we're ready to move on and start working our chart. So your bowl should look something like this. Your toe, I should say, should look something like this, like a little bowl. Now we're gonna continue working in the round. We're never gonna fasten with a slip stitch or anything like that. We're just gonna continue working in the round. You will have a little bit of a jog up the side of your stocking, but it's at the very back of it. So you, once you fold the stocking in half and flatten it, you won't be able to see it. So I have stopped one stitch short of my last stitch because when you're changing yarn colors, the best way to do that so you see as little 
of the jog as possible is to in to change yarns on your last yarn over and I'll show you how to do that in just a second but for now I just want to explain the graph to you a little bit so let me scoot it over here each square is a stitch so we have 56 stitches around <clears throat> now that we've completed round 15 we have 56 stitches around so we have one through 56 stitches shown on our graph here so each square is a stitch and we work from right to left from bottom to top so our first row is going to be all red and then our second row this will bring us back to the beginning our second row begins with red and we're going to start adding white so i will go ahead and show you how i'm going to attach the red and then we will complete row number one and then row number two i'll show you how we're going to start making the transition between different colors of yarn to keep your yarn as tangle free as possible so let's go ahead and begin with our one row of red so we're going to continue with our split single crochet so we're going into the middle of that stitch not into the top two loops but into the middle and we will push the hook through we will yarn over and bring it up now before we finish this normally you would yarn over and pull through both we are going to switch to red. And what I like to do is weave in my tail at the same time as I'm working. So I'm gonna to switch to red and I'm gonna bring that up through. Green, we're gonna lay behind our work and we're going to crochet over top of it as well as crocheting over top of our tail. So we're gonna have two yarns back there that we're going to encase inside of our stitches. So. I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna go through the middle of our stitch for split single crochet, come out making sure that we have both of those yarns on the top side of our hook, and we're going to complete our split single crochet. We're gonna do that about 10 times, and then we're going to trim the green off and the or trim the remainder of the red tail off. 10 stitches is plenty to hold those in there. So let's go ahead and do those 10. So there's number two and number three. Sometimes split single crochet can be a little bit tight to work, but it makes a nice, thick, really durable, fabric-y piece. So you've got a nice, stiff stocking that will hang on a hook straight instead of flopping all over the place. So that's three, here's four. and five and six and seven what i like to do is kind of smooth out my row as i go to i kind of you know push the stitches back because they tend to come forward a little so i just kind of push them back so they stay nice and straight and in line. So we've got seven, eight, nine, and 10. We're not gonna have much of a red tail left to trim, but that's okay. All right, so at that point, I'll lay it down and I'm gonna trim off the little bit of red that's left along with the green because we are done with the green for quite some time so we'll set those aside and we're going to carry on now with our split single crochet all the way around the row until we come back to the beginning so i will finish up this row you go ahead and finish up this row too and i'll meet you back here all right so we finished the first row of our graph so this is what it looks like. You can see where the little jog is going to happen right here. Um, when we're working in the round and we're not attaching with a slip stitch, it's a constant spiral. So you're always gonna have a little bit of a jog. But like I said, that'll run right along the back edge of the stocking, um, along the back side of the heel. So you won't be able to see it when you hang the stocking. And it's really hard to notice once the stocking is done anyway, so. 
we're going to go ahead and move on to row two. So row two of our chart has us crocheting one, two, three, four, five, six red stitches and then switching to white. We're going to add white in just like we added red in and weave in the tail uh, over 10 stitches, but we're going to keep both um, red and white attached at the same time. And it can get a little bit tangly if you don't work with those two colors a certain way. So I'll show you the best way that I have found how to do this. And um, it may work for you, it may not work for you, um, but you'll definitely, you'll definitely see what I mean about getting the yarns tangled. And you can always just move the balls of yarn back and forth too. That's, that's another really easy way to do it. But, um, the method that I use is, is pretty easy. So hopefully it's, um, something you can pick up on. So, okay. So we've got our six red stitches. So we'll go ahead and do those first. So we've got one. two, three, four, five. Now before we complete that sixth stitch, we want to change over to white because the next stitch is going to be white. So we are going to start our split single crochet, pull the red through, and then we're gonna grab that white and we're going to switch to white. We're immediately switching back to red too, so don't get too crazy with the white. All right, so we've got our red and the white tail back here now behind. So we're gonna do the next stitch white and immediately switching back to red, which I'm going to grab in front of the white. So we're gonna let the white be our back yarn and the red be our front yarn. And I'll show you what I mean as we continue on. Um, so you wanna, in front of the white yarn, not behind it, in front of the white yarn, grab your red yarn and pull it back through. And then drop your white yarn. So now you've got your white yarn and your tail behind. And we're gonna continue on with, let's take a look at our graph. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven red stitches. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we've got six, we're changing colors on seven. And seven. So now we need another white stitch, as you can see on the graph right here. So we're gonna switch to white as we finish this red stitch. To switch to white, in order to keep that white yarn in the back and the red yarn in the front, we wanna go behind the red, not in front of it like we did when we were switching from white to red. We're switching from red to white, so we're going behind and we're gonna grab that white yarn, bring it through. Now we're ready for our one white stitch that we need. So we will grab white, we will go through our stitch, pick it up and immediately switch back to red. We wanna keep red in front, so we're working in front of white to grab the red. So that's how I best keep my yarns. And then we'll drop white back and we'll grab red again and carry on. That is how I best keep my yarns from being tangled. Um, it works pretty well for me. 
Maybe it will work for you. Maybe you will find something that works better. Um, but we're going to carry on with the graph just like this. There are some areas where you're going to be carrying more than just two colors. In this section here, you're gonna carry three colors at a time because we'll introduce gray on the top and the bottom along with the cranberry and the white. And then in the middle, we've got green and cranberry and white. So you'll have three working yarns then, but those are always just for very short periods of time. These, this is just one row actually that you're carrying that third yarn. So even if it gets a little tangled, you're gonna be cutting it soon anyway. So you should be all right. Um, so let's go ahead and continue working our graph just like this all the way up until we get to row 33, which is where we're gonna start to um, chain an area for an afterthought heel, which means we're going to go back after the fact and add that heel in. Um, and then it comes together really nicely and it doesn't interrupt your graph all the way up. So um, I will see you back here when we get to, uh, when you get done with row 32. All right, we've now gotten to the end of our foot graph. So your piece should look something like this at this point. Uh, when you flatten it out, of course, it'll look like the toe of a stocking. I completed round 32 here. We're getting ready and you can see the slight jog that I was talking about. Um, hard to notice unless you're in an area with solid lines and then you can kind of see it. But this will be the back edge of our stocking anyway. So um, it will be the part that's hanging away from you. So you won't be able to see it too much when it's all complete. So we're moving into round 33 on our graph. And I'm going to set this aside for a second so we can look at this. So round 33, you'll notice, says chain 25 for afterthought heel. Um, the heel will be green. That's not important right now. You're going to stay with red. Um, when we fill in the heel at the end of the project, we're going to use green to do that, just like we did with the toe, so it'll match. So what we're going to do here is we're going to chain 25. We've completed our last stitch in 32. We're going to chain 25. And then we're gonna count 25 stitches and then start our split single crochet again. So I'll show you kind of what that looks like. So we've got, we're going to chain 25. Okay, and making sure not to twist that chain, you want to count 25 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. We are going to skip those 25 stitches and work into st stitch number 26 with our split single crochet. So when we go back to do our afterthought heel, it is going to be in the round here. So we're gonna carry on and finish out this row with our split single crochet. Just like our graph calls for, we're gonna do the rest of the row and split single crochet and then when we get to the end of row 33, we will begin 25 stitches in that chain that we just made. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and finish out this row and I'll get right back with you and we'll work into that chain together. All right, we've come to the end of row 33. So we are back at the beginning of our chain here. So we're gonna work 25 single crochets into this chain, just like you would if you were beginning a new project and needed to work uh, a chain and then a foundation row into it. It's a little bit obnoxious, not everybody's favorite usually, but um, it is only 25 stitches, so bear with it. 
So we are going to make sure our chain is straight. So we're gonna have the back bump of the chain on the bottom and then your two V's will be on top. So you're working into your two V's. So you wanna make sure that you're starting with the correct stitch, which is almost a little bit hidden. Working that split single crochet, your two loops are a little bit more right than they normally are. So this is stitch number one right here. You can see the back bump and then the two Vs. So you may have to really kind of wiggle into that first stitch. A little bit tight. It's always good to chain those 25 a little bit looser. This one's gonna give me a little run for my money here. There we go. All right, and we'll carry on just like that, working 25 single crochets into our 25 chains there, all the way across until we get to the end of the chain. Make sure you're counting so that you know you got 25, and then we will carry on with our split single crochet. After you are done with row 34, you will move on to your leg graph. So your leg graph is going to look like this for the Nordic heirloom stocking. You're again going to start at the bottom. You are going to work from right to left, bottom to top, and then your cuff will be up here. So you'll notice row number one is also a solid red row. Row number two is a solid green row, and then you start into your patterns. So uh, go ahead and continue working the leg section just like you worked the foot section. It'll work a lot like this. And um, once you get through all of these, you'll then on the next round start split single crocheting again into these. So. It'll be just like it was down here. And I will see you back here after you are done with the leg portion and we'll do the cuff together. And then we will come back and we will put the afterthought heel on it. All right, so we've completed chart number two. So I've got a long stocking with an opening for the afterthought heel. We're getting ready to start the cuff. The cuff is going to be done, it's a slip stitch in back loop only. And that will create a nice stretchy ribbed cuff that we will block a little bit because it'll still be a little bit tighter than I want it to be, but I'm using the largest hook possible to slip stitch into my stitches at the top of my cuff here, so, or at the top of my stocking body rather. Um, you can see the jog in your stocking as it goes, as the color changes change since we're working in the round. Um, the great thing is on the right side of the stocking, you don't have any of that, so it looks perfect. So let's begin the cuff. We are going to do a color change to bright red. So I left my last stitch unfinished so that I could show you how I'm gonna change the color to bright red. Um, we're using a six and a half millimeter hook. So we're gonna use a K six and a half millimeter hook for the cuff part of the stocking. We want it a little bit, we want the stitches a little bit bigger so that the ribbing is um, not too stretched in towards itself. As it is, we still have to block it a little bit, but I just, Personal preference, I like this ribbing the best. So, sorry, we need to start with the five millimeter and finish our last split single crochet. So we'll go in, we'll grab the green, and we're gonna change to our red. Bring red through. Okay, so now I want to slip stitch to the next stitch it doesn't need to be in a, a split single crochet style slip stitch. It can just go in the top two loops, but I just kind of want to anchor that red yarn there. So we're going to go ahead and slip stitch in there and then we're going to change hooks now. 
So I'll pull the loop up just a little bit so I can get the larger hook in. Now we are going to chain 21. and 21. Now be careful not to turn your chain or get it twisted or anything like that. So you've got your 21 chains here. We are going to start working in the back loop which is in your chain, in your beginning chain here, I'm gonna take the hook out for a second so I can show you what I'm talking about. You've got your chain here, we are working in only the back loop right here. So what that looks like is, we're gonna skip one stitch and we're gonna work in the second chain from the hook and we're going in just that back loop. So you will only have one loop that you're going through, not two. And we're going to slip stitch into that back loop. We are going to do that all the way back down to the body of the stocking. So since we skipped that one stitch and we worked in the second chain from the hook, we are going to have 20 back loop only slip stitches back down to the body of the stocking. So we will just continue to work the back loop only, slip stitch, back down to the body of the sock. Because it's a nice big hook, it makes nice loose stitches, so these aren't too, these shouldn't be too tight or difficult for you to do. Again, make sure your chain doesn't get twisted, make sure it stays nice and flat especially in these first couple of rounds so that you end up with nice cohesive ribbing rather than some unwanted twists in the first few rows. I know it looks long right now, but we're gonna fold it over. So it'll actually be about half this width when we, uh, or half this height when we are finished with it. We've got two more here. And the last one. All right, so we should have 20 and you can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 20 total. Now we're gonna go back up and back down and back up and back down. But first, we I mean we've got to attach this thing to the body of the stocking. So what I want to do now is slip stitch into the next stitch available. So you attached your red yarn here. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. and also into the next stitch. So we're gonna slip stitch into two of those stitches in the top of the stocking. Now we're going to turn it the opposite direction and we are going to go back up to the top with again, back loop only. So we are now using the back loop here. So we will insert into that back loop and carry on up 20 stitches to the top of the row. Oh, 
you'll see these start to make almost what looks like a knit like ribbing that's really really stretchy as you continue on and as the width of it grows Almost there, it looks like we have four more stitches. And last one. Okay, now we've gotten back to the top. At the top, before we turn, we're always gonna do a chain one. So we're gonna do a chain one so that we can turn our work and come on down the other side. So chain one, now again, back loop only, 20 stitches all the way back down to the body of the stocking where you will then do one, two slip stitches, turn it around and come back up. So, I will go ahead and carry on on this stocking. You go ahead and carry on on your stocking and I will meet you back here when we get back to this point. So we have gone all the way around with our back loop slip stitch to make a nice stretchy cuff on this. Um, so you should be back at the bottom near the body of the stocking. So now we have to connect our two ends and all we're going to do is slip stitch those together and it's just you know it there's not really any good tricks to it you just grab one loop of this row and one loop of this row and you're going to slip stitch those together again one loop of this row one loop of this row and slip stitch together we're going to do that all the way to the end and then we're going to fasten off and weave in our ends up here and move on to our heel. For our heel, we will be switching back to green and back to our five millimeter hook. The larger hook is only for this cuff section because the back loop slip stitch tends to be a really tight stitch because it's very stretchy so we need to switch to a bigger hook for that one getting a little bit closer to the end here it's really fun to watch these stockings come together I had so much fun designing these. I don't know what it is about a handmade stocking. It's just so charming. I find them so charming and so nostalgic and so traditional and I just think they're really really fun to make for other people. They're timepieces. You know, they're they become family heirlooms that you use every single year. All right, we're at the end of our row. We will go ahead and fasten off and we'll cut a little bit of a tail. Pull our loop through nice and tight there. And I'll weave that in in just a few. But basically what we're gonna do is fold her over. We're gonna block her so she stretches a little bit more. And we'll have a nice, beautiful top cuff on our Nordic stocking. So let's move right into the heel. We have left 25 stitches unworked for our afterthought heel. And it is a good idea to kind of um, flatten it out this way so that, cause what, so that the opening is all on one side because we are going to be working in the round here. The same way that we did the body of the stocking, we're gonna be working split single crochets in the round and we're going to be tightening these corners the first 
row, we will tighten them with a split single crochet, two stitches together. And in every row following that, we will do a split single crochet, three stitches together. So, um, of course, this row right here is a little bit difficult to work a split single crochet into because we have back bumps. This was our chain that we filled in. So the first time around, these are just gonna be single crochets that you crochet into each one of these back bumps. Um, but then going forward, you will have single crochets going the right direction all the way around. So we will move back into our split single crochet to keep the same look going through the heel. So I'm gonna look at my notes here for a second, which are absolutely just, I'll show you them. You have a beautiful pattern to work from, but this is what I'm dealing with here because I haven't typed it up yet. So we are going to move back to our five millimeter H crochet hook. We are going to attach our green, our heel and our toe are both green on the Nordic stocking. So we're gonna attach to the last stitch in the row. So you can count if you need to, but it's pretty easy to see because this row you have coming down all the way and then this row stops. So you know that this stitch right here, this one has one worked into it, this one does not. So this is our last stitch of the row. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert my hook like I would normally for, for a split single crochet. So right in the middle of that V and I'm gonna attach my green yarn. Pull that back through and we are going to slip stitch it. I'm going to work the tail in as I go around this first time so that I don't have to try and turn this thing inside out and weave it in later. All right, so now we are going to, now that our yarn is attached, we are going to work a split single crochet two together over the corner to pull that corner nice and tight. So we are going to start that stitch in the same stitch that we attached the yarn in. So we'll go through the middle of it again. And then this first row, remember, we're just working single crochets into the back bumps because that's all we've got to work with. So we're going to go into the back bump of the first stitch on the top row. These are gonna be a little tight. So just kind of have patience and we're going to pull that together. Now we just made one stitch out of these two, which pulls that corner nice and tight. I'm gonna turn the stocking around here. It's a little long for my workspace, so sorry about the jockeying around of everything here. Now we are going to single crochet in those back bumps all the way till one stitch prior to the end, which should be 23 stitches. So we will single crochet all the way to the end of this row. So we've got one, Those back bumps are stubborn sometimes too. I also tend to be a little bit of a tight crocheter, so that doesn't help in a situation like this, but we're only working with 23 of them, 25 of them actually. All right, so we've got five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm gonna trim the end off of my tail, which I'm still working over, so now I have no end inside the stocking to weave in. So that's eight that we have there, nine, 10, 11, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, <laughs> 21, 22 and 23 that leaves us one stitch at the end of the row which is just right we're going to do the same thing in this corner that we did in this corner we're going to do a split single crochet two together of course this stitch will just be a single crochet but we're going to do our normal split in the first stitch of this row so let's turn this again we will go into the back bump of that last stitch grab our yarn then we will go into our first stitch split crochet split single crochet style grab our yarn we're going to yarn over and pull it through all three hoop loops on the hook now we will go ahead and do our split single crochet all the way, leaving one stitch unworked at the end of the row. So we are going to do 22 of them across, leaving one stitch on this stocking, it's a red stitch, left unworked. should be number 10 and 11 gets us halfway there so we will carry on with our split single crochets That's 20, so we should have two more and then one unworked, which is exactly right here. So we'll get these last two in here. After this foundation row going around the heel, it gets a little bit easier because it's more repetitive. <clears throat> okay, so now we are going to start with our pattern of three uh, split single crochet three together in each corner and everything else along the row is going to be a split single crochet so every row will reduce a little bit because we're removing a, a couple stitches each time um, a couple stitches in each corner each time so let's go ahead and do our first split single crochet three together together so we're going to go in our first stitch here, which is the only unworked stitch that we have from our foundation round. So we're gonna go ahead and insert there and we're gonna yarn over. Next, we're going to go in our split single crochet two together from our foundation row. So we are going to insert in the middle of that stitch and yarn over. Last, we're going to go into the stitch directly to the left of our split single crochet two together from the foundation. So we will insert into the next stitch, 
yarn over. Now we are going to yarn over and pull through all of those, which again, pulls that corner really nice and tight. I loathe getting holes in the corners when you leave an afterthought heel, and this just really tightens those corners up really nice so you're not left with those gaps. So now we will carry on and we will do split single crochets in the next, let's see, what do my notes say here? In the next 21 stitches. So we've got one, For the sake of not leaving a ton of <clears throat> wasted space on the video, I will return back to you when I get back to our corner. Remember, we're doing 21 split single crochets. All right, we've gotten to the end of our row. We've done the 21 split single crochets along the row after our first split single crochet three together. We are now going to do another split single crochet three together in our corner. So we have our last stitch of this row. We have our split single crochet two together from the foundation row and we have the next stitch and that's what we will do our split single crochet three together over. So your middle stitch every time you come to a corner your middle stitch that you're grabbing in that split single crochet is always going to be the split single crochet three together from the row before. And we'll pull those nice and tight together. <clears throat> On the bottom, you're gonna have one less stitch. So you're going to have 20 split single crochets across until your next split single crochet three together. And then you will have 19 up here until your next corner and then 18 until your next corner and every single time you go you will have one less so we will go ahead and complete these all the way through and then meet back up to seam up the small hole that we'll have left when we're done with all of the rounds I've gotten around to my last row here. I just did my second to last split single crochet three together. I'm going to do four split single crochets to finish up this row. And then we will do one final split single crochet three together in the corner. Gets a little tight to work in when you have this few of stitches in the round. Going through that split single crochet from the row beneath and then our last stitch. This is one of my favorite parts of the stocking right here. This seam. I love the seam that this split single crochet three together creates in the corners. It's so nice, it's so tight, and it doesn't make for an overly bulky, wonky, wobbly heel. I have made some stockings that just have the most unattractive heels on them, and it took me a number of days to figure out exactly what method I wanted to use, but this was by far my favorite. I just absolutely love the seam that this creates. So we are now going to sew what little opening is left together. 
So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut about a 12 inch tail just to give ourselves plenty of room. We'll set that aside and then we're gonna pull that loop right through. And we are going to sew this right along here using the front loops of all of our stitches all the way around like a mattress stitch. And then we will fasten off and weave in that tail and our stocking is almost done after that. To finish this step, we're gonna go ahead and take a yarn needle, darning needle, and we're going to thread our tail onto it. And we are going to just work through the front loop of each one of the stitches on this final round. Pulling tight as we go. To seam the heel of the stocking together. Okay, so that finishes that up nice and tight. So we'll go ahead and secure that. And then bury our end. I'm gonna secure it twice. And then we're gonna bury that end just underneath the foot here. All right, so we have our heel all completed. And if we take a look at our stocking, laid out the way it's supposed to be, Heel should lay somewhat flat. Now, when we block the cuff, we will also spritz our heel a little bit with some water so that we can shape this area a little bit better and it lays nice and flat. So, the only thing left we have to do here is add our loop. What we're gonna do is block our cuff first and then we're going to add our loop. Now, I like leather. I just like the way that it looks. I think it has a little bit of rustic appeal to it. So I'm gonna be using leather for mine. I cut a leather strip about eight inches and I'll fold it in half and I will use a leather hole punch. Uh, this one is extremely old. It was my grandfather's. They look a little different now. Um, you could also use something sharp uh, such as the pointy end of a pair of scissors and a hammer uh, or, a, or a rubber mallet would work better um, to put a couple puncture marks in here. Um, what I like securing it to the stocking with, I love Chicago screws. Chicago screws are just, they're two pieces and you've got a male end and a female end and they just thread together and then you can tighten them with a Phillips head screwdriver. These particular ones are bronze, which I like the look of with my leather. The other side has the Phillips head on it. So once you get your holes in your leather, you place it on the outside of the stocking and you push your Chicago screws through one on each side and you twist them and tighten them. 
since it takes a while for these stockings to dry after you block them. I'm not gonna be able to show you the loop now because we don't wanna get the leather all wet. But, um, but yes, thank you so much for being with me for the Nordic Fair Isle Heirloom Stocking. I hope that you check out the other three stocking patterns too. Um, one will be releasing every Monday, the first four weeks of November, and then I have four other patterns for you leading up to Christmas to round out the eight weeks of Christmas. So, um, hopefully you found some help in this video if you were looking for some. If you still have questions, please, please, please reach out on the Facebook group or on Instagram or Drop me an email, jamie at brooklynhandcrafted.com. Happy hooking.